I want to tell you today why speaking in tongues is of no use to believers today. It is purely unnecessary for believers today. Now, let's start first by checking why was the speaking in tongues even there in the Bible? What is tongues? Tongues are written spoken languages. Now, what really happened? Remember in the Tower of Babel, okay, back in the Old Testament uh, with uh, Nimrod, what happened is that um, when these guys were creating the Tower of Babel and uh, God was angry about them trying to reach him and trying to, you know, uh, want to divert the aspect of God. They told them, go and fill the earth. And now they want to go and fill heaven. <laughs> so God was like, no, 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 no. Let me destroy something here. And he came and he, and he separated their tongues so they could not be able to hear each other. Okay. So now that was where the tongues, the languages were divided. And then now after the, when now the, the end times approached after Jesus died and all that, eh, God had to find a way of how now people will be able to preach the gospel to the whole world. And that is when now, when the Holy Spirit came in the day of Pentecost, the, one of the main reasons was to be able to break the language barrier, okay? So that uh, 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 someone from the Arab world can be able to listen for, to someone from Europe and someone to, from Africa, and you can be able to hear each other. And that is what we call the gift of tongues. Now, let's see what actually happened. In the Bible, in the book of uh, um, Acts chapter 2, it tells us, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, other languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, let's see what kind of tongues were these. What kind of languages were these? Was it babbling like what we hear people saying? Rabba, rabba, rabba. But at the end of the day, are they really speaking spoken, written languages like what these people spoke? Listen to verse 5 of uh, the book of Acts. Chapter 2, it says... Uh, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. If you're a Kikuyu, you hear a Kalenjin speaking in your language. You hear a... Um, an Indian speaking in your language, and you're like, wow, they're speaking in our language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are, these, are not all these which speak Galileans? And now we hear every man in our own tongue, our own language, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia, in Judea, Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia in Egypt, and parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they're all amazed and were, you know, and all that. So you see, they were speaking written, spoken languages. But now today in churches today, people, are they really speaking written, spoken languages? They are babbling. They're just saying, ba 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 and then they call them tongues. That is not what was the reason for tongues. God can give you a gift of tongues. Let's say, for example, you go to, to India, and you can only speak in uh, Swahili. My friend, God can give you a gift of tongues to so go and speak to those people in their own language that they can hear you. Remember the Bible tells us why uh, these signs had to be there. Remember, these are signs, some of the signs for the end times. And remember, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 22, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. You see... When we preach Christ, when we say it's Jesus and Jesus only, people want signs and wonders. Show us. Can, can you speak in tongues? Can you do this? People are looking for signs. They're looking for signs, things which have no value, benefit. Right now, we can all translate different languages. Why do we need these signs? Why do we need somebody to come and speak in tongues? And as a matter of fact, even the Apostle Paul spoke about these tongues and said, they are somehow useless. 
Look at the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 4. The Bible says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. If I'm speaking in, in, a, in, a, in Kalenjin in front of people who are uh, um, cumbers, for example, I'm only edifying myself. I'm only edifying myself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. What will be the need of me coming to speak in a language that you do not understand? It will make no sense. It's only me, myself, who understands what I'm speaking. Okay? And Paul says in verse 5, I would, I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. It is better for you that you don't even speak in these tongues, but just prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. And when I talk about prophesying, I'm not saying also the vain prophecies. I'm going to do a video on that. Prophesying is just lifting up. What does the Bible say? What is God speaking in his word? How can we, you reveal something that God has put here. That is prophesying. It's not like saying, oh, I can see your home. I can see you. No, that, that, that's lying. Okay. And Paul even says, now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Expect, except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrines. Even things without life, a life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds. How can it be known what is piped or harped? You must make some sense in what you're speaking. You must know why am I speaking this or that. And even the Bible says, if there is no interpreter, if there is no interpreter, please keep quiet. <laughs> okay? If there is no interpreter, keep quiet. Let me show you something here. Um, verse 27, it says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three. And let, and let that by cause, let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and unto God. There must be an interpreter. Somebody to say, okay, what well, this guy has said, he has said that uh, Jesus is good and he's coming soon and blah, blah. Or this guy has said, because if there is no interpreter, then you're just bubbling, you're just making noise. Keep quiet and speak to yourself. So when you see people in church and they are all speaking in tongues, just know that that church is confused. Those people don't know what they are talking about. And they don't even know the truth. They don't understand the truth. Because the truth is, these tongues, if they were to break the barrier of communication between different people who are different languages. And now, everything is out there. Even Google can translate. Okay? So we, didn't, we don't need tongues anymore. It was a sign back in the days. But now we have Christ Jesus. And for those who still don't have Christ Jesus, the gospel is very simple. Jesus came to save those who are lost. Some of the people are lost so much in church because they have never heard the truth. What is the truth? The truth is understanding the man Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And unless you hear the gospel, you hear the truth of this man, you can never be saved. What did Jesus come to do? He came to die for our sins. He became our propitiation so that we could be able to be saved. He died on our behalf so that whosoever believes in him, believes that Jesus did this for me, then he can be saved. It is very simple. Salvation is all about understanding. You have to come to the knowledge of the truth to be saved. There's nothing that you need to do. It's just to hear, hear, understand, believe from your heart. And then you confess out what you believe. Confessing does not give you salvation. It's just saying, Jesus, I agree with you, what you have done for me. It's just like saying, I now understand that fully you love me. When you go to a court of law and you're confessing, do you really confess to understand? No, you confess what you already know. And that's why we are told that we have to believe from our hearts. Romans 10.10 10 says that you believe from your heart unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation jesus died for our sins he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture hope this made sense to you